Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us humbly acknowledge our sinfulness and give praise to God for the gift of Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection brings us salvation. on us. May the Lord forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to obtain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble, make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lamb leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness, sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains? You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the Lord is coming at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lenders are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is he, the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out and see in the desert? A reed swaying by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out to see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Be patient, brothers and sisters. St. James tries to give us some wonderful advice. But I don't know about you, but these past couple of weeks, I have been anything but patient. And just to be honest with you, the other day I was at the local Walgreens. And I was there just to pick up a little bit of cough syrup from the pharmacist. The doctor prescribed something for me. And there was a line to pick up the prescription. And it never fails that the people in front of me are then fighting with the pharmacist. Their insurance didn't cover that particular medicine. And so they said, well, give us another one. And they said, no, you have to call your doctor. And it went back and forth, back and forth. And I was trying to stay there patiently, but I was not patient at all. And then we think about all of the things that we're doing today. We're always so busy. We lose our patience when we're driving, when someone in front of us is in the left-hand lane and not going the speed limit on the expressway. 
very, very aggravating. When you have to wait in line. You know, nowadays, even when we're on the computer and the computer is not going fast enough, we start to get impatient. And yet, St. James reminds us that we are called to be patient. That we are waiting for the fullness of God's kingdom to come. The day of the coming of the Lord is at hand. Patience, as the good sisters used to tell us in school, is a virtue. And it's something that as we await the return of Jesus in glory, just as our ancestors awaited patiently the breaking of the Messiah into time, it's never on our time but it is on God's time. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. It's Gaudete Sunday, which simply means rejoice. We rejoice because we know that that nativity of the Lord is going to be very near as we await Jesus to break into time. And today we once again encounter the Baptist. This time the Baptist asks, is Jesus the one? Are you the one we are to follow, or will someone else be the one? And then Jesus says to them, Tell John what you see and hear. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news proclaimed to them. You know, those were the exact words of the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah who predicted the Messiah to come and would say that I am the anointed one and says what will happen when that one comes. The blind shall see, the lame shall walk, the lepers will be cleansed, the deaf shall hear, the dead will be raised, and the poor will have the good news preached to them. And so Jesus is fulfilling that prophet's vision of the new Messiah coming into so, as we await now Jesus' return in glory, as we rejoice because he is so near, we know that the Lord is here with us. We know that partially of the kingdom of God is here, but its fullness is not here yet. And we await that day. We await that day in hope. Just as our ancestors awaited the Messiah to break into time, we now await his return into glory. And so, my friends, let us be patient. Let us take an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, from those who have gone before us as we await joyfully, rejoicing in patient hope of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us now profess our faith. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
the life of the world to come. Amen. Our healing God brings comfort and joy to his people. With confidence we lift up our needs, seeking the goodness he brings to our lives. Our response throughout Advent will be, send your peace, truth, and justice. For those who are away from the church, for all those who are still seeking the promised one, for courage to be prophets who lead others to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. For patience as we wait for the Lord's light to break through the darkness in the world and in our hearts. For the healing of divisions, bitterness, and resentments, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. For those who cannot afford fine clothing, comfortable houses, and all that we take for granted, for the homeless and families struggling to put food on their tables, for those whose lives and actions reflect the light and the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. For those who will come in to be reconciled to the Lord and to one another in these days before Christmas, for those who judge others, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. For those with diminished sight, impaired hearing, and weakened limbs, for those who suffer chronic pain and ill health, and for caregivers who must make hard decisions for a loved one, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. We remember our beloved dead for joyful passage through the gates of the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Send us your peace, truth, and justice. God our Father, guide us as we walk together through this holy season of Advent. Jesus our Emmanuel, we lift our prayers to you, seeking peace, truth, and justice in this day and age. Gift us with the blessing of your abiding presence and send your Holy Spirit to accompany us on our journey. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly. 
to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other that sign of God's peace. away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into 
my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, seeking God's peace, truth, and justice. Thanks be to God. Amen.